whether whether we agree on what happened with Mr. Farr, uh, Tom Jipping, why why not take the time that's necessary? These are lifetime sure, there, appointments. Sure, there is plenty of time. What we're talking about here is how much time to de is available to debate a nominee after the Senate has decided to finish debate. It is the right. last few hours of a very long process, and the effect of these kinds of delays and obstruction is that today we have the highest sustained level of district court vacancies in American history. We have 140 vacancies across the federal judiciary and have been in the triple that have been in the triple digits for more than two years. This but, is devastating to the judiciary. But don't you also have under President Trump in his first two years more judges approved for the for the uh, district uh, federal district positions than even un than under President Obama. No, in fact, well, in fact, it, President Trump made 159 nominations in his first two years. President Obama made barely over 100. So you can expect the number of confirmations to be higher. However, as a percentage of those nominees, the Senate confirmed fewer for President Trump than it did for President Obama. What, I want to come back, uh, come to the point, um, uh, Christine Lucius, about whether, I mean, the basic question, doesn't every president have the right to nominate whoever he wants or she at some point in the future it, it, to sit on these federal uh, the on these federal presidents judges? presidents absolutely have the right to nominate whomever they want, but the Senate is what we're talking about today, and the Senate has an independent role under the Constitution. The Senate must decide and must carefully vet these lifetime appointments before weighing in. And so what we're seeing today is an effort to have the Senate go faster, but we're also seeing a president who is nominating people with records of bias, and that is giving civil rights advocates like myself real concern about speeding up that What do you process. mean records of bias? Records of bias like Thomas Farr had, like Matthew Kazmarek has. This is one of the pending district court nominees who could be up in very short order. Who, who has called people who are transgender delusional, as an example. How would that person, as a judge, be fair to people from the LGBT community? Tom but, but, on, but honestly, de Democrats in the Senate also vote in record numbers against nominees who, about whom there's no controversy at all. I looked at the appeals court nominees, for example, from President Trump, who were unanimously rated well qualified by the American Bar Association. They received an average of 35 votes against them for confirmation. That, that is unheard of in the history of this process. So it, it's not just one or two district court nominees who have a little bit of controversy, this kind of rule change is, it needs to be put in place so that the normal part of the process works efficiently. It's a much bigger subject and only in about a half a minute left can each of you explain why this matters so much. What is at stake here in just, in just a few sentences? So what is at stake here is whether our civil rights laws or any law that you care about will be upheld. At the end of the day, courts are the place of last resorts, whether you care about access to health care. You spoke earlier in your news summary about that pending case in district in Texas. That was a district court judge who ruled that pre-existing conditions should no longer be protected. So whether it's access to health care or voting rights, the courts are the place where all of us get our rights upheld. In just a sentence, what's it say? We, we, you know, there are conflicts over individual nominees in a few cases, but we need a process that works so that the Senate as an institution does its job. We have record vacancies today. We have t twice as many vacancies as Christine's organization once said was a vacancy crisis. So uh -huh. and we, need to, we need a process that works so that the judiciary can do its work. Thomas Jipping, Christine Lucius, thank you both very much. Thank you.